Hey there, Daria here, and you're watching the Mavavi channel again. There are basically three things I can't stop looking at. That would be breathtaking sunsets, Friday on the calendar, and the way people make things by hand. this video together with my colleague Katie. Today's episode focuses on the way DIY vlogs are put together and how to shoot this type of video. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about shooting and editing. Stay tuned! DIY. Most probably you've heard this abbreviation, right? It stands for do-it-yourself. And the main idea is doing activities like decorating, building, and making repairs at home by yourself without employing a professional. For some reason, the first thing that crossed my mind with this DIY thing was a Canadian television series called Homes on Homes. Here, check this out. If the name doesn't ring a bell, let me just say that it features a general contractor called Mike Holmes, who visits homeowners looking for help with home renovations. Truth be told, this whole DIY thing started spreading long before the present time. Back then, the movement involved the renovation of old houses and home improvements done by homeowners generally without the aid of a paid professional. In the 70s and 80s, there was a sharp increase in the publication of how-to books and magazines for practical amateurs. People were enthusiastic about everything, from technical repairs to furniture making in a home workshop, that sort of thing. For some reason, it wasn't the only area impacted by the DIY movement. Reportedly, it also touched upon the music industry at that time. There was some culture shift going on in music. For one, punk rock bands wanted to do everything themselves, from album production to marketing. It was their way of expressing independence from the big record labels. Today, DIY is a totally different concept. YouTube and Instagram are overflowing with videos like this. They feature people creating decorative home accessories, clothes makeovers from old-fashioned to trendy, phone accessories, badges, keychains, diaries, and many, many other things. If you're bursting with creative ideas and can make your own things by hand, you can make your own DIY video and share your creative work with your subscribers. DIY channels are getting more and more popular as people happily share their videos with friends and watch them over and over again. The originality of your idea and your DIY skills will drive your success. Shooting and editing in this case is the easiest here. You just place your camera above the desk, shoot the work in process, then do some simple editing in the program and speed the video up a little. But there are a few things to consider in DIY videos, like which camera should be used, how to set it up, how to do the lighting and how to edit your video so that it is clear but not too long. Let me give you a few tips that'll help you to avoid most common mistakes. How to choose a camera I generally use an everyday camera for my recording. In my case, it's Canon 60D. If you've got a more advanced camera, well, what can I say? I'm feeling jealous. But in fact, it's not that necessary to have a pricey camera. Well, even a smartphone will do. What matters is that you pick the right background, you set the light appropriately, and you fix your camera in the right position. But I'll get back to it a bit later. Picking a background If you're about to shoot a DIY video on how to assemble a motorcycle in a garage, make furniture in a country house, or create sculptures in an art workshop, then don't worry too much about the background. Just make sure the part that is in a frame looks good. However, on YouTube I see more and more DIY videos about small objects that are better created at a desk. Like badges, cell phone cases, accessories, photo frames, and other homemade articles. If that's the case for you, I'd advise you to handle this background thing in advance. Apparently, you may get a random desk, like the one you've got at home. That's what most newbies in DIY vlogging do, they just shoot their desks. But in order to make the image look appealing, you've got to pay attention to the surface. You need to make sure that the table is clean and it's flat and it has no scratches whatsoever and no unnecessary objects. I'm in favor of minimalism, so I just prefer a plain white background. But I don't have a white desk. So what am I to do? I came up with a solution. I took a clean sheet of white paper and fixed it to the sides with adhesive tape, so it doesn't slide off. That's how it looks in the frame. Neat, spacious, and with plenty of light. The background doesn't distract the viewer from the main object. Boring, you say? Well, maybe so. The video is no different from a thousand similar DIYs. 
That's why I've added a couple of details in the bars of the shot. Not too many, though. It's just so that the video is recognizable and the whole image is not so boring. Many vloggers use this simple trick. Compare this DIY. See? Just a background, nothing extra. Now check this one out, with gently applied details along the borders. I definitely like the second one better. If you're paying attention, you will have noticed that a pink background was used in the second sample, instead of white. Well now, it's just all a matter of taste. You could even use a tablecloth or wrapping paper with an original print, like in this example. If you're going to use this background in each of your videos, it makes them easy to single out. How to set up the camera To figure out how to set up the camera, first you'll need to decide on the perspective from which you'll shoot. You may place it a bit to the side, so that the view would seem as if it were from over your shoulder. Well, in this case, you'll have to use a tripod. I use this light amateur tripod. The price is around $40. If you pick this perspective, let me just warn you about some common mistakes ahead of time. You shouldn't place your camera at the same angle in front of the desk or sideways, just from behind your shoulder. But in this case, you have to make sure that your shoulder doesn't take up half of the frame. Well, try sitting at the table and ask someone to take a still picture of you, and to be on the safe side, you will see how the frame arrangement works. Let me confess, I don't really like this perspective. For me, I prefer to shoot from above, that is, with your camera above the desk in a vertical plane. In this case, you can fit possibly everything you need in the frame, and your DIY is more likely to become more visual and clearer. Well, there is one more thing that's been bugging me. How do I suspend the camera right above the desk? I was lucky since we have all the right equipment in our studio. With the help of these solid supports and this horizontal bar, we managed to create this P-shaped construction and we fastened our camera right over here. But what are you supposed to do if you don't have such luxury? At times a tripod will be more than enough. Did you know that some of them can be set up to do such things? Let's unscrew the tripod head and turn it upside down. Now you can have the camera or phone facing down. There are some nuances, though. It is hard enough to put a tripod on an ordinary desk. If you're shooting with a cell phone or a wide-angle lens camera, the tripod legs might be caught on camera. Most definitely, you'll need a focal distance of 35 mm. If it is any bigger, nothing will fit in the frame. This solution may work out if you need to shoot something small and take an extreme close-up. But what do you do if this is your first video and you've got no supports with horizontal bars, no tripod and no camera around? Well, all you've got is your smartphone and your room. Here are some alternative options to professional fastening that you can create by yourself. A pile of books and chopsticks for food. A desk lamp and double-sided adhesive tape. A standard selfie stick, a bucket and a towel. A homemade arc constructed from water pipes and two bars. How to set the lighting? Ok then, we've got the desk ready, the camera and the mounting. What is left is lighting. I was lucky since we've got professional lamps in the studio. I placed two lamps sideways to remove shadows. This white transparent shield diffuses the light and makes it not so harsh. Let's see how our working surface looks with different lighting. Well, you've probably noticed that I do not use ceiling light. It's because here we've got standard lamps and they illuminate this yellowish light. And this thing, it has white light. It'll all mix up and, to put it simply, well, it won't look great. Don't be upset, though, if you don't have such lamps. I'm about to share some lighting hacks. The best bet is to use natural light from the window. To do this, just place the desk in front of the window so that the light hits your face. And make sure that the light doesn't fall sideways. If you do this right, it should be quite enough, especially if you've got large windows and a sunny aspect. It may happen that on a cloudless day the sun will shine too brightly, hitting your face and the desk with everything lying on top of it being exposed to light. In this case, blackout curtains and window blinds will most likely ruin the whole picture, but an ordinary light lace or a thin curtain will soften the light. In this shot we have only one source of light, that is a window. If unwanted shadows appear, try using the ceiling light of the room and ordinary everyday lamps to remove the unwanted shadows. It is best to use white or even cold light. 
For me, warm light is not a good match for natural lighting from the street in full daylight. How to shoot DIY right? Well now, the set for shooting is up and running. We've set the light, got the desk ready, chose the best perspective and securely fastened the camera. The last one is critically important. For starters, you don't want your camera or your phone to fall on the desk while you're recording. Secondly, if you move the camera accidentally or if the mounting comes loose, it'll spoil the composition of your shot. And when you get to the editing part, it'll look awful, trust me. Set the focal point before you get down to shooting. Many cameras and cell phones automatically define the focal point. I strongly recommend you to switch off this function. Otherwise, your hands and the objects will permanently slip out of focus. Personally, I prefer to switch to manual mode. Once you set the focus ahead of recording, you no longer have to worry about it. If you're shooting with a mobile phone, set the constant focus on the object. Most people don't know about this helpful function. I decided to make something trendy out of this jeans t-shirt. My colleague Katya agreed to help me, since painting is her thing. Everything's ready! I'm hitting record and the shooting starts. There is no need to rush or fuss. Many newbies fall into this trap. Show your DIY at a leisurely pace. Later on, when you're editing, you can remove extra footage and speed up the video. Most importantly, make sure the top of your head doesn't get in the shot. Now that we've shot the whole process, it's time to start editing. How to edit a DIY video? We're going to use Movavi Video Editor Plus. Not only will it help you to remove the unwanted parts of your DIY video, but also add brightness and special effects. But first things first. Let's drag the video onto the timeline. It is too long. I doubt anyone will watch the whole process of my DIY. Keep the most important and interesting parts. Select the clip and place the playhead at the beginning of the segment you want to delete. Use the scissors tool. With the help of the cursor, define the end of this part and use the scissors again. Now let's remove the unwanted part. Like that. And you can do it exactly the same way with all the extra footage. Remove it ruthlessly. Some parts of a DIY video cannot be cut out, because we need them to understand the process. But they may still last too long. To prevent the video from being too long, you can accelerate some parts of the video. Select the clip, hop into the setting, and here is where you can increase the speed of your video playback. At the beginning of your video, it would be good to add a splash screen with the title. There are backgrounds and video clips in the program's built-in collection that you can use as an entry point. Check them out, there are plenty of them. Let's pick this one and place a title above it. To do this, just open the title tab. I like you like that. Often the authors of DIY videos comment on their process with a voiceover or titles and captions. Let's add some text explanation to the video. It's not always clear to viewers what exactly is happening and what the object in the frame is. Some things that are obvious to you as the author are not always apparent to others. Take care of your viewers at all times. Now let's move on to the callouts tab and check out the highlighting section. It'll make a great background to the text. It'll be easier to read like that. Here. Everywhere you find it appropriate, I'd suggest you use this. It will create a themed look for your video. Here is a tip for newbie DIY vloggers. Split your video into logical parts or even steps. That's the way we do on the Movavi Vlog channel. For example, step 1 – select a background, step 2 – set the lighting, and so on. To indicate the steps, use titles and highlighting callouts. The program already has a selection of them for this exact purpose. If you feel like commenting on your actions using your voice, you can use the built-in voiceover function to record audio. Connect a microphone to your computer, select it from the list of devices, and record the oral explanation for your video. To liven up your DIY video, open the tab with stickers. Here you can pick stickers that match your theme or the vibe of your video. Now it looks truly great! And finally, don't forget to show the result of your work at the end of your DIY. To do this, just copy the clip from the beginning of your video and put it at the end. 
it would be cool to show the before and after once again at the end of your video. Now our DIY video is complete. Let's save it now. Now I want to try it all! Now I'm gonna make myself a flat lay with unicorns, a few phone squishes, photo frames of some kind… Seems like I've got a whole bunch of ideas for the next DIY videos. How about yourself? If you created something fabulous, don't hide it! Leave us a link in the description, cause I'm curious, I really am! If you added some stickers to your DIY tutorial but you feel like animating them, watch this episode and try it! Hold on a sec! Before we sign off, let me just remind you – like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet, and click on the notification bell to be the first one to watch our next episode. See you next time!